There was a, a news article I read today. A plane carrying 170 people from Ukraine landed in Moncton, and the top comment was, haven't they suffered enough? <laughs> I was like, yeah, take, take the poor people somewhere else, like, not here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Wait. Really? Any more Moncton NPC stories? The most ridiculous one that I don't think I said on stream was when I was out walking Gatsby and Yoshi outside once. And this guy was walking down the street. And he stops and um, looks at Gatsby. And he is like building up the courage to say something to me, I think. And then he says a name. He like, looks at the dog, looks at me and says, is that Loretta or something? You know what I mean? Something like that, some name of a dog. And I'm like, no. And he's like, oh. And then he kind of hesitates and he's like, I've heard of a dog that lives in this area that goes by that name but I haven't met the dog myself. And I'm like, okay. And then he left and I have never forgotten it. Cause I'm like, who has heard of a dog, <laughs> but, <laughs> but hasn't met the dog and will then go on to ask strangers in the street if this is the fabled dog. like. Uh, anyway, but what happens not yesterday the day before I went out which is an event for me And I don't know if it's because I was still wearing a mask and a bunch of people around here still wearing masks But most aren't so I don't know if like a lot of people were just kind of looking at me But it wasn't really like a why the hell is he wearing a mask? It looked more like a Honestly, like I know I'm just playing into the delusion of it being NPC land It just honestly felt like they were just expecting me to talk to them like they were in like an idle state and their heads were turning because like I was getting close and it was triggering part of their AI. Like, let's have a talk. That guy's coming over. You know what I mean? Like it's just, everyone just kept turning as I was going by. It was really weird. It's not usually like that here. So there's like a couple of weird things that happened. I don't know if I'll say them all, but I went to the ATM machine and as I'm going to the ATM machine, there's this guy just walking circles around outside of it. And he looks at me as I'm coming, like, really expectantly, and then he just watches me go inside the ATM machine, which has, like, big glass windows, and I look outside, and he does this kind of, like, this inward fist pump, like, fuck yeah, called it, I knew he was going into the ATM machine, and then just walks off, like, with a swagger in his step, like, hell yeah, like, w what? <laughs> Someone just like spoke to me on the way back from the store as well and was just like, hey, how's it going for whatever reason? I don't know why people talk to everyone else here. There was this really weird thing that happened. Like there was this car parked outside a Burger King and there were these two people sitting in the front seats and there was this lady kind of leaned over the window on the passenger side kind of just talking into them while I walked past, okay? So, like, they're having a big conversation, and it was like that meme, and they were roommates. Like, I caught a part of their conversation, you know? So I was gone for an hour, and I came back, and they were still there in the same position, and she was still hunched over in the driver's window. Like, this is like a quest that I have to go over and talk to them. Like, they're waiting for me to go and trigger the next part of the script, I guess. And as I walked past, like, I swear to God, the two people that were in the car in the front seat looked at me like they were asking for help. Like, they wanted to leave and they couldn't. Like, this psychopathic lady was just, like, holding them hostage with her bullshit. You know, like... Like... <laughs> <laughs> As I walked past, they were like, oh my god, freedom. That's what that looks like. Like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like... Anyway, those are my recent Moncton NPC stories. There's still no beating the ones that we had when we first moved here. We live in Moncton, New Brunswick, and it is just an awful, awful place where everyone's kind of weird. And the weirdest thing that happened when we first moved here was that we were walking downtown one day. And someone, as we walked past them, started speaking to me and Lily and was like, that new stadium downtown is almost finished. That sure is gonna bring in a lot of new jobs to the city. And then just kept on walking. 
like an idle NPC kind of talk. Like I'm ser I, I'm I swear to God, like Lily will confirm it. Like 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 seriously, that really happened. And there really is a new stadium that they were building. Like it is actually real. And then there was another guy that we passed, and he like held up this plastic bag he had because he just came back from like the gas station or the convenience store, I guess. And he holds it up and he just says to us as he's walking by. Just bought some scratch cards, gonna go home and scratch them off, hope I win, and then just kept on walking, and it's just like... They're just like, what? Like... Who who are these people? Like... is that, I swear to God it's real. That's not even the weirdest one. I've said the weirdest one on stream before, and no one believes me, and I don't blame them because it's absolute insanity. Like, I still sometimes wonder if maybe I dreamt it or something. Tell a story of say thank you- No! Why are you making me relive that? <sighs> See, the scary thing is, I have started to talk like an NPC a little bit too. I went to the gas station when Lily was pregnant. Like, which time? I know, right? I got a bunch of chocolate and stuff and snacks. And then unsolicited, unprompted, as I'm paying for it, I told the cashier that, you know, this is for my wife, she's pregnant. It's it's our third baby, I think it was the number three at the time. And then, like, on the way back, I was like, oh my god, like... It's infectious. Like, what's going on? Like, why? <laughs> what the, what's wrong with me? It's settling in, you know? Like, all right. So, the say thank you story we ordered food one day. So, the guy knocks on the door and I take the food. Finn is with me. Because Lily placed the order, I didn't know if she had tipped them. So I said to him, did you get tipped or do I have to tip you? He like waves his hand. He's like, oh, it's fine. You know, like, the tip came in on the order. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he turns around and walks away and has his back to me. So I say to Finn, say thank you. And then the delivery driver said thank you. This happened to me. This actually happened to me, okay? This happened. I have to live with that for the rest of my life, okay? That's when you say, oh, I met my kid. No, 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 you don't understand. Like, it was it was too spaghetti awkward for that. I just said, no, I, I said, no, no, say thank you again. Like, trying to get... Sorry, I just died of cringe. Um, Like, I just kept, like... I just went down with the ship trying to get Finn to, to, get Finn to say thank you to the guy. And he just, he just would not turn around. He was just like, I'm done with this asshole, this psychopath who wants me to say thank you for a tip. Like, even though I just said thank you, just right back into his car. You know, just like, yeah, I have to live with that for the rest of my life. That might be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me, actually. I'm not going to lie. Sorry? Yeah, sure. One second. All right, sorry. I don't even know if I want to go into what just happened. Everyone's fine. Lily ordered groceries from the grocery store. And the guy came and put the groceries, like, you know, knocked on the door. And he saw Kate in the upstairs window. And thought she was wearing a mask but she wasn't and he wouldn't leave because he thought that we were making the children wear masks indoors and that constitutes child abuse he wouldn't leave i have to call the police i just have to call the police to make him leave he wouldn't leave he, he started filming me like he thought i was a karen or something <laughs> Don't look very good today, so you know. Um, like I, I don't, I don't understand. Like I don't like. Even a guy down the street started yelling at him, you know, just get in your car and leave. I am serious. Yeah, I had to call the police. And then I'm on the phone with like dispatch or whatever, and I'm explaining to her what's going on. And then I'm like, okay, he's leaving now because I'm actually on the phone. Like I threatened to call the police and now I'm actually on the phone. So now he's leaving. And she's like, oh, okay, I guess we don't have to come out then. Let me know if it happens again. And then hung up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man. Oh, sorry, I need I just need I need a drink. I need a second. Like water. I don't need a drink drink. I need some water.
Can you complain to the grocery store? Yeah, I told him that. I said, he's going to lose his job over this. You can't just like, okay, I'm dug in. I'm just going to stay on your porch and just harass you about your kids. And he like, I want to talk to the kids. I don't want to talk to you. Like he was like really, he looked kind of stunned though at the same time. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like I did open the door telling him to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing I said to him. <laughs> so like maybe he was a little like like off kilter. <laughs> so like <laughs> I, don't, I don't but like like Lily looks scared and the kids look scared and it's just like, you know, just like what what are you what are you doing? Like just get get away. Like what the hell? Oh Oh man, I hate the city. <sighs> like, am I wrong in thinking that's just completely, is it covid idiot syndrome? Where like, it's got nothing to do with like, oh, like you don't need to wear a mask. Like, why are you, like, why are your kids have masks on? She didn't even have a mask on. She didn't have, like, she, there, there are no masks. Like, oh God, I hope he doesn't come back. I don't think he will. I went outside and took a picture of his license plate. So we'll see. As soon as I started threatening, you know, like, we're going to have to contact the grocery delivery service. And, like, I don't think you're going to have a job after that. And suddenly that's all he cared about. And he was like, no, no, you won't. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, man. Oh, my God. All right. I do feel better with the dogs in the house after what happened. Remember when I was getting the dogs and I told chat that I don't feel comfortable living without a dog to, like, bark if anyone's at the door or some shit? And chat told me I was being a paranoid Peter about it. And I was like, what the hell? Like, it's happened in the past. Do you know what happened during this fucking in, in the in the stream break? Like, for a couple of nights, there was just some guy just hanging around the house at night. Went out to walk the dogs one time in the morning. And this, and this guy, like, literally just walked out of my backyard. Like, he walked out of my backyard as I'm with the dogs, and he's just like, oh, oh, just, you know, just, I'm just cutting through. And I'm like, what? What do you mean you're just cutting through? Like, there's no cutting through. There's no way to cut through my backyard. There's nowhere to cut from or to. And and then he just, he just, like, skulked around on the sidewalk for a while, saying he was waiting for a ride. And I just, like, just stared at him with my dogs just going ballistic. And then he left, and I never saw him again. I'm pretty sure he was smoking on the side of the house. I didn't get a, like, I'm trying to break in or, like, a harmful vibe from the guy. NPC say, yeah, Moncton sucks, man. I was paranoid about people being in the backyard after that for, like, a couple weeks. Whenever I, like, smelled something weird or heard something weird, I'd, like, run out with my flashlight on my phone. One time it was just a big raccoon. You have a gun? No, I just, I just have no fear because that's what being a dad does to you. I went out with a baseball bat, if I remember correctly. Could have picked a knife though, should have. Now I didn't want to be that threatening. I went out with a baseball bat. I felt like such a loon. I'm not trying to be like like big time edgy guy right now, by the way. Like I like I would be destroyed in a fight. I don't know how to fight. I'm not a small person, but like 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 no, like I'm not I'm not trying to be like that. But it's just at the same time, it's like be being a father just does these things to you. You just sometimes you just have to you just have to do something that's way out of your comfort zone, and it's only only later that you just like realize what you did, and you're like holy shit! Like you'd be surprised at at the things you're capable of when the pressure's on, and you'd be surprised at how much it can crash down on you afterwards as well. <sighs> anyway, so it's been a weekend. Um, as you all know, after what happened on Friday, having to call the cops. Yeah, my life is chaos. I hope you realize you're only seeing a glimpse of it, like the chaos that is my life. Since Friday, Lily is, uh, as you know, pregnant. <sighs> With um, the idea that we need to leave Moncton. Um, so... That's what we did for most of the weekend, is that we, we worked on... <laughs> so we, we really did work on that <laughs> for, for most of the weekend. <laughs> you can't leave Monkey Town? What, because of the stories? Like, no. 
I can't stay here for the memes. Like, I was on Twitter on the weekend, and I see Northern Lion tweeting, like, he's like, you know, it was warm and sunny th today, so you know I grilled. And then he's talking with his audience about all the shit he grilled outside on his deck. And I'm sitting there reading it going, oh, you got to grill? I have to call the fucking police. Like, what the fuck is this shit, man? Like, what, <laughs> what the fuck? Like... Come on, it fucking sucks here. Are we gonna play a game? Oh my god. I forgot to tell you guys the best part of that story because I was so out of sorts when I came back. When I went away for one of the other times, um, I actually called the grocery store service and, and lodged a complaint. Um, and let me tell you, they, they said they were going to call back within a couple hours and they didn't. They, they were just like, this can just be an email. And the email was, um, oh, don't worry, we'll make it so he can't deliver to you again. And, like, I don't know about you, but that resolution isn't enough for me. I don't think the guy should necessarily be fired, okay? Like, I think maybe some sort of report and some sort of, you know, like, like put this on his file. Maybe he has to pass some sort of certification test or whatever. Like, I don't necessarily, like, maybe he's having a bad day. Maybe he f he was on something. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't necessarily, I'm not that vindic vindictive, okay? Even though I'm pretty pissed. But, like, you know, th th he cannot deliver to you again is not enough, okay? Like, th this is just broadcasting to me that the lunatics that deliver for you are just restricted to certain houses and I just might get someone else who's restricted from another house next time they come here. Anyway, so the best part of the story I forgot to tell you was when I called, um, I called 911. I, I'm not sure if I should have called the non-emergency number. Not really used to calling the police. Um, like, I have called them, like, once in the past, but uh, that was for when, like, there was a, a van was on fire in the parking lot uh, in Toronto. Um, and and they got mad. They got mad at me. Like, I call with, like, the van is, like, visibly on fire in the parking lot. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, yeah, I should probably call 911. And I call 911, and I'm like, hey, I, I live here. There's a van on fire in the parking lot. And she's like, yeah, we know. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, sorry that I didn't have OC when I called. You know, like, sorry that this wasn't like a new call for you, dispatch. Like, yeah, well, we know. Like, all right, sorry to bother you. You know, <laughs> fucking repo. Like, yeah. Anyway, so when I called uh, on Friday, um, like I, I told this part of the story. She, she's like, she's on the phone and she's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, he's leaving now because I think that, um, because I, because, because he's realizing I'm actually calling. And she's like, oh, okay, you know, that's fine. Then we don't have to come out, call if he comes back, which I think is fairly standard. Although, like, still, like, eh, you know, I understand they're spread thin. But the best part of that interaction, I forgot to tell you guys, was as I'm on the phone and I tell her, I'm like, yeah, there's a delivery driver and he won't leave because of X reasons. And I went into the whole story real quick, and she. She says to me, I swear to God, she says to me, what was he delivering? I, that was her first question. I swear to God, that's what she asked me. So this place sucks, man. This place sucks. Oh, that was a Moncton story. So like I was walking down the street the other day. I'm going to the grocery store a lot because we don't order groceries anymore because of what happened. And like this guy, it was like a side quest. I've had a couple side quests rejected or accepted recently. One of the other ones was someone was on their bike and they rode up to me and they're like, hey, and I'm like, hey, and he's like, interested in going to garage sale today and i'm like nope and he's like all right then and he just kept going and it was like and then it came up side quest rejected so i was walking to the grocery store and this couple like maybe in their late 50s was in the entrance to a plaza and they call out to me as i'm walking by he's like hey do you know where this auto store is i don't want to say the name of the garage because i might dox myself do you know where this is do you know where kiru's auto store is and i'm like no and i just kept walking and then i take a couple steps and i'm like hold on i have my phone i could just find out where this is real quick for this guy 
So I turned around and I whipped out my phone and I said, Kiru's auto store, you said? And he's like, yeah. So I turn on my phone and I speak into my phone. And I say, Kiru's auto store. And then I show him the phone because it brought up Google Maps, like it was directions. And I showed him the map and I thought this would be the end of it, right? Like he's older than me. He's driving. He clearly knows how to drive. I don't know how to drive. He clearly knows how to read a map. Here you go. I've shown you where it is. And then he looks at me like he's never seen a map before in his life and he's like hmm yes okay so how do I get there with this and I'm looking at him I'm like what how how is this not the end of the interaction that we're having my dude like so I'm like looking at the map now and I'm like um it's over there and you're nowhere near where you have to go and I'm like okay so you go down there take a left and then just keep going for about 10 minutes you're that far away and he's like okay thank you so much and then he left and and then i just went to the grocery store just completely fucking confused like i don't understand how you didn't know what this was i don't understand how you don't have a phone how do you not have a phone yourself that can do this thing how do you not have a gps system like how could you not find kiru's auto store or whatever anyway so what i'm saying is i will do things like that but in terms of normal interactions and everything i consider myself to be kind of a prick but i know in my heart that if I was ever in a situation of the prisoner's dilemma, I would always press ally. There's no way I would never do it. I would never hit betray if I was ever in this kind of thing, unless, let me brag about how good of a husband I am. So I buy Lily flowers regularly for no reason. I will just buy her flowers. I like to keep Lily in flowers just all the time. So I often come home from the grocery store and I have flowers for her. Today, for whatever reason, just every single person I walked past was like, nice flowers. Nice flowers, nice flowers, nice flowers. Like, okay, <laughs> my man, my man, nice flowers, nice. Okay, great, thanks. Doesn't happen all the time. I'm still Canadian though. Every single time the cashier at the grocery store says to me, Air Miles, I say, No, I don't have one. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I apologize for not having air miles. <laughs> Harper Shaw is texting me. There's a removals van outside my nightmare neighbor's place. They're finally going. All right, we're in Moncton. All right, interesting. All right, we're in Moncton. All right, what's well, good to know? I feel at home. Let's feel at home. I can't. I can't wait until I accidentally pressure wash my own toe off, and I have to sit in the waiting room of Moncton's hospital for 36 hours before I'm even seen to go into a room, and then it's another 36 hours before the doctor comes out and sees me. And when he comes in, he's high on meth and or coke and or alcohol. That's 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 great. All right, now we're going to the playground, right? Dirt Finder, I've got a frankly ridiculous situation on my hands. You see some of the local children here have been coming down with a curious and unsightly form of dermatitis and a few fretful folk have been putting it down to the condition of the recreational facilities. Are they really this bad? Is this Moncton again? Is it like Moncton and someone set the slide on fire and melted part of it? And they were like, ah, whatever, we're still not going to close down the playground. Just don't use the slide. All right. So Lily has been seeing a psychiatrist in Moncton since we got here to continue her prescriptions for bipolar. And almost everything here is done by phone. And the most wonderful thing about Moncton's healthcare system when it comes to doctor's offices is that they don't answer their phone. They just don't. So like you will call them and it'll just go straight to machine if they have a machine and they don't check their messages. So that's been a fun thing. That's been a regular problem. They just don't answer the phone. So what you have to do, and if you don't live in Moncton or you don't live in a place that's like this, this is going to sound like complete horseshit unless it's more common than I realize. Almost every single doctor's office in Moncton works the same way in that they will only open their phone lines properly and answer their phone for one hour a day. Usually it's between like 10 and 11 or 11 and 12. And you will call... And if you get answered in that time, then you get the chance to get an appointment 
to come and see the doctor that day. This is how it works here right now because there's such a huge shortage of doctors. This happened after Kate was born. Kate had a suspected problem when she was born and it turned out to be nothing. But like the doctor that examined her at birth scared the absolute living shit out of me and Lily and said that she might have some birth defect and she needs to be seen right away. Make sure you call my office and get an appointment scheduled. And then the receptionist was like, La Mayo, I don't answer the phone. And then I had to physically walk into the office and give the receptionist a shit about not answering the phone because this happened. That's a whole other story that I probably won't get into because it's a little too personal. Anyway, so that's how the doctors work here. The doctor's offices work in Moncton is that you have to call in the one hour a day when they're open in order to get an appointment to be able to see the doctor or even talk to the doctor over the phone. And if you don't do that, they just stop answering the phone after an hour and that's it. They also stop answering the phone for anything like, hey, referrals, or I don't need to see the doctor, but I need you to fax over some of my information or email me some of the information or, hey, there's a problem with my prescription. The doctor didn't sign it properly or they can't, the, the doctor's handwriting is illegible, so they can't really see it, blah, 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 blah. So if you have anything, you have to call in that hour and that's it, or else they just don't answer the phone and they don't check their messages. Or in the case of the doctor that we had with Kate, just didn't have an answering machine. Just straight up, just no answering machine, la mayo, fuck you. Anyway, so this is a very long-winded way of saying that every single time Lily has had to have an appointment with the psychiatrist, she has had to play roulette with the receptionist to get an appointment. So she's been had to call, had to call, had to call. So the three times in a row, the three most recent times that she's gotten an appointment, she has called and have to do this shit because the receptionist didn't call her to make the appointment. So after three times of doing this, the receptionist apparently got angry for some reason and said to Lily, okay, next time, don't worry, you don't have to call me to make the appointment. I'll contact you and call you. That's how things work around here. You don't have to keep calling me. And Lily's like, yeah, okay. All right, sure. So Lily's mad. So Lily's like, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not calling this bitch. So I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait for her to contact me. So she's supposed to contact her in I think May. So May, she's supposed to get an appointment to see the psychiatrist, okay? So May rolls about. No phone call. All right, no appointment. June June goes goes through. Go through. No appointment. Still no phone call. All right, let, let, let's let's play chicken. How long is it going to go? All right, now we're into July. And it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm legit running out of pills here. So I, I need to start calling now, even though we're like we're in two months over overdue. So so then I'm going to call. All right, so now let me turn let me turn this off for the end of the story, okay? Here's we go. At this point in the story, you are probably thinking that the punchline is that Lily called to make the appointment and the receptionist got mad at her, right? Or some bullshit related to it or said something like, well, why didn't you call for the appointment? Okay. That's what you think the punchline is going to be. Instead, the punchline is that the doctor left the province doesn't work in New Brunswick anymore, closed her office, closed her shop, closed her practice, and they were meant to email and call everyone to say that you need to find a new doctor, and they just didn't, Lamayo. Been closed since May. Welcome to Moncton. Lily calls public health after this to get back on the list and like, hey, I need a psychiatrist, you know, for these pills, even if it's like an interim one. And the lady that works there was like, I don't, I don't have anyone to refer to you. Like, like this was it. Like that she was it. There is no one else. She's like, I don't know what to do. How is it possible? Moncton sucks, man! Go check out the Resident Evil 8 stream to see how much Moncton sucks. I just live at the grocery store after that. It's frustrating. The emergency room's wait times are my biggest uh, concern because I, ha I have had to go to the emergency room since we came here. I had to take one of the kids there. And, um, and that was a harrowing experience I'm not a big crier but after I came home from the hospital that night I just just burst into tears that was my night that was like three years ago I think I just burst into tears when I got home from that that was just just a horrible horrible night I still don't really understand what happens but like it was I'm in the emergency weight room and 
it was really late at night and when when we got there it was it was already close to midnight or something and like i can't remember if it hit one in the morning i've told this story on stream before so maybe the time is right in the in the previous time it, like on a q and a i told the story um I can't remember if it was like one in the morning or two in the morning. Like some some announcement comes over on the on the on the like the speaker system in the hospital that was just kind of like one in the morning or whatever whatever time it was. Okay, like I can't understand a word they're saying. And when this came out over the the speaker system, almost every single person in the waiting room that was like like a Moncton like has been lived in Moncton almost their whole entire life like like visibly kind of like shifted in their seat and went uh, uh, like settling in and and some people actually actually got up and left and i'm and there's this like this this lady that was next to me who was um very very condescending about something earlier on but let's not get into that um like like i look at her and she and she's like sees that i don't know what's going on and she just says to me so we've now entered the time where uh, they just won't see anyone until the next doctor gets on shift at nine in the morning. But if you leave, you still lose your spot. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, they they don't they don't see anyone now because there's no doctor here that's going to be able to see anyone. You know, that's that's what that just was. And I'm like, uh, really? Like, but she was wrong. It was only another four hours until we were seen, but maybe they gave us priority or something, or a, a surprise doctor came on 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 call or whatever because I had a kid. Like, yeah, but like the, the fact that everyone there knew what that was and was just like time to time to like go full on camping was like, yeah. Can you rank the seasons from least favorite to favorite? Uh, winter definitely favorite. Uh, winter, autumn, spring, then then summer. I hate summer so much. Mostly because of the mosquitoes. I hate mosquitoes. Mosquitoes love me. Winter's my favorite. Yeah, I really like the snow. I like it's particularly if I wasn't in Moncton, then then maybe I would I would put autumn or spring as number one. But in winter, Moncton kind of shuts down, and you don't have to deal with like the the hordes of Dark Souls NPCs that that. Um, will roam about at night just screaming into the streets um, and also stealing anything that isn't uh, bolted down. Um, so, like, the, the cold really makes the city, like, tolerable, like, because you don't have to deal with all this shit. Um, so, I'm not kidding. Uh, I'm not kidding at all. So, like, yeah, that, that's a thing. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I, think, I think if I would live anywhere else, I would, um, I would prefer autumn or spring. I really want to avoid doing um, a Kickstarter for any project. Not that I have anything really against them. I would just like, I don't know. I just, I just rather just do it more straight up, you know. Kickstarter to move away from Moncton. <laughs> Here's a, here's a Kickstarter to get me out of Moncton. That's it. And then in true Joe fashion, then he just doesn't go. Kickstarter update year three. Sorry, still in Moncton. <laughs> I'd like to tell you an old story. Is it about a snail? Seventeen years ago, on a rainy morning, a woman went jogging in a large park. And she tried to her swerve to save a snail. Her to a fork in the road. Uh oh. Normally she'd run down the right path, but for some reason this day she chose the left. Along the way, she bumped into a senior citizen she saw every day. Surprised to see her, I asked, Why did you come this way today? This was her reply. Because there was a snail. <laughs> her body was discovered a few hours later. <laughs> This reminds me of my latest, my latest Moncton story, which is like, 
like where I'm the NPC, but it's kind of boring. But it links to this now. Is that like like for for the last couple a little while, I've been going out like in the morning and and getting groceries and food and stuff for breakfast, and I keep seeing the same guy that lives down the street. And you know, like I don't, I don't want anyone knowing, you know, my comings and goings that much. So I, I, I'm like, I'm, you know, what I'm gonna do this time on the way home? I am gonna go down a different street and cut off that corner, and therefore I minimize the chances of of running into this guy. So like I'm going down there, right? And I'm like, all right, so I'm not going past that guy's house, all right? So so I went down a completely different side street on the way home, and as I'm walking back, I turn to the left, and wh who who's there? Just like standing there waving at me from all the way down the street because they saw me coming back just like just somehow just just ran into the same guy again a snail yeah it was a snail so like i'm i'm the moncton the moncton npc in, in this one how did how did he know a lot has happened since we last spoke several pregnancies several new babies all right so uh last night Moncton had a blackout because an tree fell on a transmission line and knocked out the whole ass city except for a couple of pockets somehow. A tree. A tree. An tree knocked out power for six hours. Six hours. I'm really good at getting Lily pregnant. I'm also really good at not getting Lily pregnant, okay? Trust me, all right? There's not gonna be any more kids. I really wanna get a vasectomy, but like as Wuggy pointed out to me, it's Moncton. I could go for a vasectomy and come out pregnant. <sighs> what's what's the craziest thing that's happened in Moncton recently? Um, I feel like I'm going a little crazy. And I'm not sure if it's me, or if it's Moncton, or if it's just a coincidence. I was about to say, look at the big giant snake in the background, but then I realized that you guys can't see it. <laughs> so I... So I caught myself from doing that. <laughs> I was like, oh, look at that! It looks cool! The low... Because <laughs> I'm, I'm installing God of War Ragnarok. Anyway, um... I feel like I'm going a little crazy. So I went I went to the eye doctor the other day. It was terrible. They only had... No, I don't have a dog joke for that one. I really did go to the eye doctor the other day. So I go there. I'm the first appointment. And I go and I see the eye doctor. And he's just excellent at his job. And halfway through, as we're doing the eye test and everything, and my prescription changed a little bit, I was informed that I have thick corneas, which I'm very happy about. Thick with two Cs. Thick. Thick corneas, which is apparently very, very good. You're supposed to have healthy, thick corneas. And we're halfway through the exam. And he's like, so how long have you been here since Britain? And I'm just looking at him like, what? Like, how do you, how, how do you know that? <laughs> so, so I'm like, <laughs> so I just, I just kind of look at him and I'm kind of like, Oh, you know, I've been I've been here for a while now, you know. And he's like, "All right." And then it just continued on. And then as we're leaving, he once again presses the issue and he's like, "So, when was the last time you were back in Britain?" And I'm like, "All right. Like, do you want me to ask? Like, how do you know that?" Surely it's in the health records. Maybe it is in the health records, but it's Moncton Health Records. And I don't does the eye doctor have access to all that shit? Like, I don't know about that. That has to be it, right? Like, of course, that has to be the answer. So it kind of got me all a little off kilter or whatever. Anyway, um, so today I go to GameStop. I walk in and I do my usual greeting to the GameStop employees where I inform them that I am technically their boss because I own stock in their company and that they should respect me as I walk around and purchase things at their store and that this is a mutually beneficial transaction because by their establishment profiting, it is also increasing my uh, value in, in, in my stock. So I go to the GameStop to get Ragnarok. You know, we do the usual song and dance of like, I didn't reserve a copy, but do you have one? And they're like, oh, well, maybe. And then, you know, they do. I get some Christmas presents for the kids too while I'm there because usually they have some fun toys that no one else has. I'm talking to the girl there and she's making small talk about Moncton and she's like, you know, how long you've been here for? I'm like, you know, a couple of years. And she's like, do you like it? I'm like, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> she's like, I'm not originally from here either. And, you know, but I kind of like it here. And then she's like, you know, like, I, I, it took me about six years until, until I started liking it. And I was, and I was like, yeah, I feel like I've liked it less the longer I've been here. <laughs> I was like, I was giving her fucking nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was like... So it's like I feel like I feel like this the 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 city um has gone downhill in the past year or whatever, and, and I'm like yeah okay. And then I'm amongst an NPC now, so I told her you know like I have I have four kids. I offered that information freely. No one asked. You know let's look around the store to see who asked. But I, I offered that freely because I was buying a bunch of toys. And then as I'm leaving, I don't know if she misheard me. I don't know if it was on file because I have an Edge membership and it showed up. But as I'm leaving, the last thing she said to me, and it didn't come up at all. Like before this, it was, how am I going to get the toys in the house when the kids are home? And that was it. And as I'm leaving, she said, happy birthday. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, first of all, it's not my birthday. <laughs> It is my birthday next week, but it, but it's not my birthday today. <laughs> so I'm walking back and I'm like, "Why?" And that combined with the with the with the British, it's probably just a coincidence. But it's just I feel like the simulation is cracking a little bit. Oh, and I also did go to the grocery store today, and my nemesis was not there. Which I'm very surprised at because um, it was my uh, understanding that evil never sleeps. Um, but yeah, she, she was not there, uh, but there was, there was an NPC stuck in an idol animation, like, like, legit. So, Lily asked me to get a bunch of stuff that she doesn't usually ask me to get, because it's my birthday on Monday and she's making something nice for me, so she was like, you know, I need you to get some ingredients for stuff. Usually when I go to the grocery store, I have my training, I have a plan, I know what I'm doing, like, it's all mapped out. I know my route. I'm not going to go like down the same aisle twice. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm doing it right. But because there was like different things and I wasn't really sure like where some of the things were, I have to, um, OCD sounding out. What do you mean? It's just sufficient. What's OCD about? Like, like not going up and down the aisles multiple times being like, Hmm, now I'm going to get this other thing on my list. I sorted my list alphabetically and I'm going to spend fucking like six hours in the grocery store today because Hmm, time to get apples. Oh, okay. Now time to go get something that starts with a in the freezer section. All right. Now I need bananas back to the fruit section. Oh, now I need cookies. All right. Now I'm going to go to the fucking cookie aisle. Oh, now I need cactus fruit back to the fruit aisle. Okay. Here we go. Like, no, fuck off. Anyway. So I uh, usually I have my route planned out, you know, it's not formal. It's not like I'm going in, you know, like giving myself a pep talk outside as I get the cart, you know, like here I go. I'm gonna do it. I know what to do. You know, remember your training and you will come back before noon. Like, no. Anyway, so I had to go get a can of tomato paste, okay? Or some say tomato paste. So I went and got that and there was a lady there who, I have to be clear, does not work at the store, okay? And she was like, she kept picking up every single can. You, you know how there's, a, it's not a whole aisle, but it's like a tomato can section because crushed tomatoes, canned tomatoes, diced tomatoes, tomato paste. We're all in the pockets of big tomato. Let's put it that way. Okay. So she's there. She's like picking up each individual can and looking at it. And it's more like she's just kind of arranging all the cans. She's just trying to look busy as she's looking through these cans. Right. So I'm like, okay, but she was a civilian man. Like she doesn't work there. So then I left and I went around the other aisles and I'm like, oh shit, I have to go back to the tomato can aisle because I need beef broth and that's where it is. So this was 15 minutes. Okay. Like seriously, 15 minutes. So I go back to that aisle and she was still there doing the exact same thing. She hadn't moved. She was still just like moving cans and everything. Like she hadn't, like I was looking on like, what the hell? And then to make it even like weirder, then her daughter showed up with the cart and they just had a normal conversation. Uh, any of you a, uh, a John Mulaney fan? He's a comedian, if you don't know who that is, just by name. John Mulaney was apparently here in Moncton, and he performed a show, 
and then he went to Halifax. I think it's the second time he's been here. I did not go and see the show. Um, he performed a show here, and then he went to Halifax, which is a bigger city to the east of Moncton in the province over in Nova Scotia. And apparently he spent the first 10 minutes of his opening act in Halifax just shit-talking Moncton. <laughs> Someone else in the comments said something like, John Mulaney has said on record, I couldn't find it, so it's probably not true, but it's still funny. John Mulaney has said on record that whenever he before, performs in Moncton, he makes sure that he has a follow-up show in Halifax, so he doesn't have to spend the night in Moncton after he's done here. He can just go straight to Halifax. <laughs> No way, you're from Moncton. I went to UNB. I don't know what that is. I'm not one of you. I'm not from here. I just live here. Your city sucks, and Keep and I, I, I hate all of you. Thank you for no watching my stream. The Jesus, why the Oh, man. I'm sorry. New Brunswick is probably fine, but I, we really dislike Moncton. Me and my wife are very unhappy here. I was walking down the street. Two months ago, I think. Two months ago, maybe even three months ago. I said this to someone um, in a chat log, so I could go back and find the exact time. But it, it doesn't. the exact time isn't, isn't, really, um, isn't really important. Um... I was walking down the street and it was close to our house and as I'm about to cross across the, the street, um, I see this, this guy ahead of me and I look at him and my brain goes, we know him, we know that guy. And I'm like, brain, we don't know anyone here. <laughs> We don't know anyone here. What are you talking about? And my brain's like, no, we know that guy. We know that guy. We know that guy. And then I start having like a flight or fight or flight response to it because my brain is like, we really know this guy, and it's not a good guy. All right, like, like, come on, combat ready, let's go. So I get a little closer to him, and I'm like, I'm like squinting. I'm like, well, how do we know this guy, brain? Like. How do we know this guy that's walking down the street looking like he's 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 fucking methed out of his gourd, staring at the sky with a backpack on with like a speaker, like a speaker radio sticking out with like music blaring as he's walking down like just look completely dazed. Like how how do we know this guy? How do we know this guy that looks like like the Twitter CEO? And then I'm like, oh, that's the grocery store delivery guy. That, that I had to call, almost call the cops on. Well, I did call the cops, but they didn't show up. He was just walking down the street, like, in front of me, like, four minutes away from our house. Yeah. And he didn't recognize me, and we just passed each other. And I was just like, what the fuck? Uh, since then, um, there have been a bunch of, uh, uh, I think it was two people. I didn't see them, but people on the street did. They went through um, every single backyard in the street and opened everyone's sheds and, and everything if they had a shed um, and tried to get into everyone's garages too if they had a garage, just looking for things to steal. They, they went down the whole street like they were trick-or-treating. Um, this was a couple months back. Like They were trick-or-treating and they just went through. Yeah, so like I, I went outside and my shed was open. I was like, why the hell Why the hell is our, our little shed open? It came with the house. It was one of those standalone sheds. There's nothing really important in there. Um, nothing was gone. And then I was like, "What? The, why is the shed door open? And then I spoke to the neighbor later, and they were like, yeah, so is anything gone? Because they came through our backyard. They went through everyone's backyard. Yeah. Not, we're not in a very nice area. So survival horror neighbor. Yeah, um, for a while it got so bad. It's a little better now, I think, or maybe it's just because it's getting colder. Like, I used to walk the dogs at night, and I would just hear squirrels like roaming screaming down the street like there was someone around here for a while that just kept like walking and just like roaring out into the night like as they just were drugged out of their mind i guess because you know moncton is not immune to the to the opiate crisis or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be called do you have a gun i do not have a gun no 
I usually go out with a baseball bat and one of the dogs. I don't know what I'm going to do if someone tries to start a fight with me because I have no combat skills. This isn't me being like, oh my god, yeah, I'd kick their ass. I wouldn't. It's just that, well, what am I supposed to do? Just do nothing? Like, not a, not a knife, no. Why not use a knife over the bat? Because my intent is not to kill. The, the whole ni knife is better than a bat if it's a fight to the death in that situation. In most other cases, I would prefer to have the bat. I don't want to kill anybody. Also, the bat looks way more threatening than holding a knife uh, in the dark or whatever. So yeah, that included with like all the problems you have getting a doctor, like all the weird NPC stories that we've had. Um, the fact that you cannot get anyone to keep an appointment for your life here. Just, yeah, we still don't have a doctor. The whole thing with Lily where her psychiatrist that prescribes her bipolar medication just left the province and just didn't tell anybody. So she had to find that out months later that she just didn't have a psychiatrist anymore. You know, just shit, shit like that means we just don't like it here. I like the winters though. We get a lot of snow and I like that. Oh, also we have a mouse and I see it all the time in the ceiling. And knowing my Nagito luck, um, tonight will be the night that the mouse claws its way through the plastic like coating like that's covering the insulation above my head because I'm in like a, a jank unfinished basement and it's probably going to land on my head. Three days ago I came downstairs and I looked up and, and thought, is, is the mouse there? And, and, it, and it wasn't. And then when I looked back down at eye level, there was like one of the biggest spiders I've ever seen just dangling from the ceiling. Like, if I had been two inches forward, it would have been on my face. It just dangled right down from the ceiling, right right in front of me. Tell me about the ball. It has, it has big ball. Yeah, Wuggy knows all about the balls that the mouse has, yeah. I would have cried. I just I just killed it with my bare hands, because that's the dad level I am now. But it was big enough I had to, like, like, wipe a lot of gunk off my hands, not just wash them afterwards. The mouse. Yeah, I have a. There's there's a mouse. We named him Charlie. Lily is very unhappy. Have you moved? No, we're still in Moncton. It's not even the worst thing that happened this week. I took Finn to GameStop, and he knew who Sonic was. Home sweet home. Whoever said you can't go home again was probably from Arcadia Bay. And he could go home again. He just didn't want to. Looks like Moncton. If you were the mayor of Moncton, what would you change and why? I would increase security on bikes because I wouldn't want to get my bike stolen like the mayor of Moncton actually did get their bike stolen. Um, I don't know. I don't think the mayor of Moncton really has all that much power. I don't know. I read recently that, the, that Moncton is running on a huge, huge budget surplus. And they're still not, like, fixing the streets and shit. Like... They can't even keep the roads plowed. I Like, when we moved here, I was like, why does everyone just... Why does everyone not walk on the sidewalks? Why does everyone just walk in the middle of the road? And, like, that's weird. Why does everyone just walk in the street? And then winter happened, and I'm like, oh, I get it. Because <laughs> no one plows the fucking sidewalks, you know? Like, like the sidewalks are really bad here. So people just, you know, get used to it. I had a psychopath moment the other week. Um, at the grocery store, of course. I was at the grocery store and I was standing in line. There was a couple in front of me and the woman was wearing the same perfume that Lily uses. And like, I, I, I could smell it on her and it was just pissing me off. <laughs> it's like, how dare someone else use the same perfume? It's like... <laughs> oh, I could use this to make some cool armor. What? Cause I was confused. It was like, what? Like what? What the fuck? I smell Lily, but I know see Lily. This, this is just fucking, just fucking pissing me. I had an alien NPC moment uh, recently when, um, when uh, I uh, I was at Burger King no, man, and I was uh, ordering some homestyle breakfasts for you for the family. Um, and oh. so I I asked for that and I, I said no like has some eggs. And they, uh, she was like, man. how do you like your eggs? And I was Sweet like, tight, I don't <laughs> <Sweet> know. <laughs> she's like, just looking at me. I'm like, how do people usually the like them? Baby. Over easy? And she's so, like, yeah. I'm like, okay, that please. That I just, I yeah. usually I know Let's the answer, not. but I forgot I for some reason. I was like, just completely mind blank. 